So you might be wondering, if we're not setting sizes on things because we could potentially cause problems, how do we solve the situation? Let's get rid of these because we don't need any of that actually. Uh, but how do we solve situations like if we have a layout like we have right here, and down here at the bottom we have this that's clearly bigger than the text that it's inside of. Let's go take a look at that footer down at the bottom. Uh, where actually I lost my colors on there. We should have them. Let's hit refresh on there. Aha, we've got it back. Okay. So uh, with the footer coming in there, I have the background color. I have this color here. And what we want to do is I want it to be taller so that you might be going, well, this is a good time. Kevin said that don't set a size unless you need one. And so you come in and you say block size is 50 pixels, let's say. And one thing I forgot to do earlier, so we'll add that now is a text align of center. So it's centered in the middle, uh, but we're gonna notice it, all that height is coming on the bottom. If I make this bigger, right, my block size there, well, it's just getting further and further and the text isn't in the middle of that. And okay, you might know a way of doing that. There are ways of doing it uh, to center that content, but that's not really the right way to be thinking about it. We don't wanna set heights if we can avoid setting heights. Because once again, what happens if that gets narrower and then this wraps across two lines or we add more content into there and then the height's not big enough or there's different situations that can arise. So as a general rule of thumb, if you have a background color on something or you might have a background image as well, and we're gonna talk more about those in a future lesson, is we're gonna use another part of the box model, which is padding. Padding is, really useful uh, and it goes and what it is is it's just empty space but it's empty space that includes the background color so we can come on here and I can say padding of let's just say 50 pixels to give myself quite a bit of it and refresh that page and you can see it's added a whole bunch of space on the top and the bottom of my footer there around the text and we can actually visualize this in our dev tools I'm going to move up to the top since we're looking at the bottom of the page and if we come into the dev tools now and we go take a look here, I'm gonna grab my little highlighter. And when I highlight on top of that, you're gonna see this green box that's coming all the way around there. So this is all the padding that I've added in onto this element, which is super useful. And so it's empty space, 50 pixels of empty space all the way around that includes my background color. So you have content, you need more background, don't start adding heights or block sizes start adding padding instead. This is the easiest way to do it and it allows things to maintain and be adaptable. Because as this gets narrower and we start getting our text wrapping, well, if you were trying to do it in another way, the text would look like the padding's actually getting smaller because the height wouldn't be changing, right? If we did a block size on there, it would be a fixed size. Whereas now, as this is adapting, changing, that size on the top and the bottom of my text is always the same and the text can get longer and shorter still without any problems. So if you have a background and you need more of the background, padding should be the thing that you turn to. Now, there's a bit more to padding because right now I'm adding padding on the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. Uh, so on all the different sides. And this is actually a shorthand to add it on all the sides. So to highlight a little bit of how this works, I'm actually gonna add some padding on another element. We're gonna do this on a par our paragraphs again, just cause it's easier to highlight how this is working. And let's add a background uh, color and let's do an orange red, just cause we haven't used that one yet. And I like playing around uh, with these different values we have. And now we can actually see here, the paragraph gets that and then we get the extra footer is actually getting the padding on there. Uh, but if we come and take a look on that, or on one of these, let's also expand this out just so we don't have word wrap on. And if I do padding, we can just do it on one side. Or let's, uh, we'll start with the two sides because we've seen this before. We can use our block axis, just like we were doing before our margin block, or when we were adding height to things, we were using our block size. The block axis is always our up and down axis. So padding block, and let's add 100 pixels again big numbers make it really easy to see if you're learning things and playing with things and you can always reduce it later. So I'm getting 100 on the top and the bottom, but nothing on the left and the right. And as you might guess, then the inline axis is the opposite, where the inline axis will apply to the left and the right, but it will not apply to the top and the bottom. So we're only adding padding on the inline axis instead, right? And then if I were to just do padding like this, we're adding it on all four sides. So let's go back to having it just on the inline axis. And then what if I only want the padding on this side, but not on that side over here? So just here. 
So for that, we have, we're on our inline axis. And then when we did our text alignment earlier on, we saw that we have a text align start and a text align end using our logical properties. So I can say padding inline start would be my the start of my box. So it's only gonna put it there, or we could switch this over to a padding inline end, and it's gonna move the padding over to the other side instead. And so that means we could come in and I could take my padding inline start and maybe that would be 10 pixels so we get a little bit of padding here and a lot of padding over there and then we could come in say padding block start and we could do a padding block end as well and take a second to guess which one would be where so let's say i make this one 200 pixels and i make this one 50 pixels as i'm going to hit refresh here just think to yourself which one's going to be bigger the one on the top or the one on the bottom and there we go Hopefully you got it right. The start is the one on the top. So we're getting 50 uh, or getting 200 over here on the top and then getting 50 down here on the bottom. Now, the other thing to know is if we're using the padding individual word, it is a shorthand as well. So you don't have to write all of these out if you do want to apply it on all the sides. The important thing to know with padding and we have the left padding, left padding, right padding, top padding, bottom. Again, I wanna stick with the logical properties because I think it's a better practice for people who are starting web development now to be using uh, the logical properties instead of the left, right, top, and bottom. But if we do padding like this, it is not using the logical properties. There's talk about how we could maybe enable that down the road, but just so you know, if ever you do the padding shorthand, it is going top, bottom, left, and right, uh, but to a very specific order. So I'm gonna do 10 pixels, 20 pixels, 30 pixels, 40 pixels. Uh, and just putting spaces in between each one of them. And let's actually double these so we can see it a little bit more. So uh, 20, 40, 60, and 80, because bigger numbers are easier to see. <laughs> and so the 20 pixels is going to be the top value. 40 pixels is going to be the one here. 60 pixels is the one on the bottom and then the 80 pixels is the one here. And that might seem a weird way to go, but it's you start at the top and then you go clockwise. That's why they chose that order. And again, this is not using logical properties. It's depending on the writing mode. So if you were to have a site that changes the writing direction from right to left, this would still be top, right, bottom, left every single time. So it is important to know not logical if you're using the shorthand. But the shorthand is probably the most common way you're actually gonna see it used. So I do wanna show you that it exists. Uh, and we can actually put all four, but you can also reduce and only put three if you wanted to. So I'm gonna put three, let's take out the 40 here. And I'm gonna refresh. And if I do that, it's 20 on the top, 60 here, 80 here, and then you go, well, what about the last one? So it's just doing the same for the left and the right. So top, left and right, and then bottom. And then if I were to take out the 60, and we refresh that one, we're doing top and bottom, and then the second value is the left and the right. And then once again, if we go back to having only one value, now that is the same on all four of the different sides. The main thing to remember here is padding gives you more background. So don't set block sizes on things, set padding instead. Probably get used to using the shorthand, uh, but also remember the inline axis is your left and your right, and the block axis is your top and the bottom. So use them and add padding how you think you need them. And really the main takeaway I want you to have from this lesson is if you need more background, use padding, don't use height or block size. Padding is almost every time what you actually wanna be using.